Paul was concerned about the city of Athens. You know, maybe like my mom gets concerned when my room gets trash. Maybe something like that. Paul was concerned because Athens was full of false idols that the people had made. It made Paul sad to see people worshiping false gods. Paul went to the synagogue and talked with the Jews about Jesus. Every day in the marketplace, he would tell the good news about Jesus and the resurrection to anyone who was there. Some philosophers, Oh, you don't know what a philosopher is? Uh, a philosopher are, are, were usually men who like to think and reason and argue a lot. Anyway, some philosophers heard Paul teach. What is this babbler trying to say? They asked one another. He seems to be preaching about foreign gods. Other men wanted to hear more, so they invited Paul to speak at the Areopagus a place where people came to discuss important ideas. The men said, what you say sounds strange to us. We want to know what it means. Paul spoke respectfully. People of Athens, he began, I see you are very religious people. I even saw an altar you have for an unknown God. I can tell you about it. The God who made the world is Lord of heaven and earth. He does not live in places people make. He does not need anything from us because he is the one who gives life and everything else. He created the people of every nation and wants them to know him as God. We live and move and exist through him. 
We are his, and he is not made of gold or silver or stone like man makes. Paul continued, God is alive, and he commands all people everywhere to repent and turn away from disobeying him. Paul also explained that God sent Jesus. When Paul told how Jesus rose from the dead, some people made fun of Paul. Others wanted to hear more. Because of Paul taught the good news of Jesus, some men and women in Athens became followers of Jesus. The students here at Newsbury Academy are working harder than ever to raise money for missionaries. Gooseberry bash Gooseberry! Winning school picks the missionary! These are the chronicles of the Mooseberry Masterclass and the exceptional and very, very, very gifted students who attend, and also Alex. Right now, we're in the lead. We've raised more money than Gooseberry. Everyone is helping, even Stephanie. Come on, people. Money isn't going to raise itself. I don't trust her, but technically she is helping. All this because Lannis reminded everyone that this is all about Jesus. My twin brother, Tannis, goes to Gooseberry Academy, and this is the first time I've ever come this close to beating him at anything. These are the chronicles of the Gooseberry Masterclass and the exceptional and very, very, very gifted students who attend. This school has a 100-year winning streak, and we won't lose the fundraising competition now. Not on my watch. We need ideas. We could go door to door fixing refrigerators. We could host a luncheon or a special tea. There's only one sure way to win, and that is to eliminate the competition. We find a way to prove they're cheating. But they're not cheating. So, we can still find a way to prove it. You mean, we cheat? Of course. We prove they cheated. They give all the money back, and we win. I think that's a terrible idea. Look, they're winning right now because they're not making this about money or competition, but about God. To say they cheated, we'd be cheating, and we would damage the good we've already done. And by doing that, we'd be saying that winning is more important than God. We'd be saying that cheating is more important than God. There's only one God, and he's the most important thing in the world. Instead of ruining their plan, let's see how many people we can tell about God. Before you cast your vote, I have an idea you may want to hear. Oh no. Just ignored it, it came and sat in my lap. Awesome work! Go get the camera and lights ready for the next shot. Before you say it, I'm not going up there. The ground's my BFF. I know that you're scared, and I know we're asking a lot of you, but I really think we can finish this movie on time. You are amazingly talented and so loved for the things that you do, but God loves you no matter what. Even if you weren't a fancy pants actress, he, he just loves you. Even if I wasn't an actress? Whew, I wouldn't want to think what the world would be like, but yeah, even if you weren't an actress. He's been trying to get your attention so you can have a relationship with him. Now, today, and you can have a future with him. I'd like that. Ready, Lily? Call me Lucy. Action! Cut! Excellent. Moving on. It's the final scene. We have a lot to do. Pete, you're on props. Make sure that Grizabelle is ready for a close-up. Got it. Micah, you're on lights. Don't turn them off. Thank you. Okay. Lucy, take a minute to look over your script and let me know if you have any questions. Yes, I know. Katie, walk with me. Have you ever acted before, Katie? 
A few times in college before I switched majors. Thank you, Peach. Katie, do you know why you're here? To be an impartial observer. Wrong! You're here to be in the movie. You have everything that we need. It's the final scene, the denouement. Everything has been leading up to this moment. Will you do it? Wow. Well, my agent has been wanting me to take some auditions. You'd be playing the villain. It won't be easy. Give me your best evil laugh. <laughs> Again! <laughs> Miss Pyre, you have lost the battle. Your cat will soon be mine. You're wrong, cat burglar. My cat will remember me, despite its cat amnesia. I've learned so much since he was stolen. I've learned that God has revealed himself to us, that we can live for him each and every day until he returns, and that we can reveal him to others as well. I've learned that eternity starts now, not later, and I can live in confidence knowing that. No! I was so close! That's too bad, cat burglar. And about your accent, it sounds like... Cat's got your tongue. Cut! We did it! In conclusion, nobody likes peppermints, so the swirls hypnotize you into eating them. In other news, it's been six months since production wrapped on Copycat 8, and the movie is finally ready for release. The film stars yours truly, as well as America's sweetheart, Lily Laplin. It's set to premiere in theaters everywhere next week. All Access Pass winner Emily Butler also toured the set six months ago, and I think the world deserves to know that she's pretty cool. Studios needing a director would do well to get in touch with her agent, who is also me. Hey everybody, I know you all know that next week, Copycat 8 opens in theaters nationwide. And it's all because of you guys. You saved our production. You stepped up. You did something really hard. We can't thank you enough. I've arranged this special screening of Copycat 8 just for you. Enjoy. God has revealed so much to me through this journey. Like that, I can live for God every day by revealing Him to the people around me. And that there's no sense in waiting because eternity starts now, not later. I had no idea the kind of people God would bring into my life, but I'm so glad He knew what was next and that He gave me an all-access pass. <laughs>